I gotta love I gotta love the lag. The lag is great. <laughs> oh, Sola's <someone's> phone. <laughs> No, it's okay. It's okay. All it's my fine. notifications are attached to my laptop, and it's on. Oh uh, no, it's it's fine. Oh. It's do you want? Do you know how to turn it on? Do not disturb. <gasps> no, how would how do I do that for my laptop? Slide I'm it. Just... Slide it to the the keyboard to the the not the keyboard the the like mouse to the right, and then like the little notifications thing will come up on the right. Bro, really? I'm not doing it. Wait. So like so like the little mouse part like like if this if this was the keyboard you wanna if this was like the trackpad you wanna slide it inwards. <laughs> It's like sliding, but it won't <laughs> drop down the notifications. If I go the other way, okay, not that way. Okay, it's not letting me do anything. The notification center should pop up on your right hand screen, like a big thing. Why is that? Okay, hold on. Is there so, a yeah. way I could share my screen? Because I is not. I'm well, not I mean, you share your screen, yeah, but I won't be able to see your keyboard. That's very true. Okay, okay, okay. This is, okay, okay, oh, okay. You can't see it. Can you see yeah. if I do this? Okay, yeah. Yeah. I'm doing oh, this. go from the other way. Way. This way from this yeah, way. the right to left. Okay, now it just brought me back to my desktop and it's mm, that's funny. weird. Because I just do two fingers and then I slide inwards. Pretty much like Yu-Gi-Oh. Hey, culture. Or, 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 or Digimon. There you go. There oh, notifications. Go. Okay, I still found it. And then when you do that, you want to hit do not disturb in the top right. I see you it. Change your life. You literally change your life. I I'm did. also I'm keeping this bit because that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> doing it, I'm doing it. Not my do not disturb. I'm an old lady, okay? No, because I just saw Elise do this, and then something <laughs> fell over. So. It was my water bottle. <laughs> anyway, do, do not disturb. Anyways, everybody, um, excusing technical difficulties, but welcome back to the Fulfilling Destiny podcast. I'm your host, Jen. Yeah. English Jan Marini Pack Club, and with me are my one of my two recurring guests all the time, uh, Jazz Ladau and Elise Gary. They are here Woo-hoo. for another episode and also to celebrate Black History Month. So, woo woo! Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a little late, but better late than ever because we're gonna have two episodes dedicated to the Black community. So, we're gonna learn a lot since I obviously need to learn more. <laughs> we're all we're here to learn that's basically what we're here to learn and uh we have a person here who can help us a guide along our way but then also uh it's to also talk about topics of racism a little bit more closely and to undo some of those what do you call it it's on the top of my head um pre-existing notions of how others feel about our black community members or any myths or misnomers or things that just need to be cleared up. Because we can hear about it in the news and we can hear about it in books and textbooks, but sometimes it's just easier to hear it from a person who just knows what that feels like. So it's a little bit like an interview session, Um, but yeah, so there's that. Oh, also small warnings. We will be talking about some medical terms here today. These are will just be used just for definitions and for some amount of context. Uh, but just be warned, a slightly mature content today. Okay. All right. And we are no way experts. So these are just things that we have learned. And these are just some things that, uh, we either have experienced and what we could do about to share about them. Basically. Okay. Trigger stuff done. Boom. All right. So where do we start? Who are we starting with first? (laughs) Since I'm looking at this list. (laughs) Uh, yes, this is totally professional. Um, anyways, (laughs) How about uh, we go straight into it? So basically this episode I would like to think is a a little bit of a tangent or a spinoff from the episode we had with Dr. Rachel Recker. I believe it's episode three. Maybe. Yeah, about health disparities. Yeah, health disparities. So it's a little, it's a small tangent off of that, getting a little bit more specific to uh, Black History Month. So that's basically if you want to know a little bit more in detail of social determinants. Uh, for health disparities, please check that episode out. If not, we'll give you a small recap of it here. But yeah. So where do we start? <laughs> <laughs> Up to you. You're the host. Oh, you are. You no, are. No, no, I am the host. Okay. So I wanted to ask your opinion. I called you about this earlier, at least mm-hmm. Sunday, Monday, sun- Sunday. Um, I saw this on TikTok because my friend sent it to me because she knows I run this podcast. And uh, basically, this TikTok said uh, it, was a, it was a black woman. Mm-hmm. Who's cooking food 
So all I saw was cooking, and then next, you know, she had a, a voice voiceover. And she said this quote, and I wanted to know if that resonated with you in any way. Uh, what doctors are to Black women is the same as what cops are to Black men. So I see some nods. I <laughs> I see some nods and some like sad nods. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I wanted to know what if that really did resonate with you. Sure, yeah. So um, from what I can get from my perspective is basically um, talking about how um, cops basically, you know, they police, that's their job. But like the whole policing type of act that comes into what it's like for Black men and constantly being followed or you feel like you can't be yourself or you can't fully say what you need to say mm -hmm. is basically like what happens. And that's very true. Uh, there's other TikToks out there and mm -hmm. like Instagram reels, if you will, yeah, yeah. Um, where it's like, um, it could be, it's a young Black woman who goes into the doctor's office and the mom's like, I better come right back in to the doctor when I step out. And everyone knows because like, that's when you get older you know, you start to have those, the talk and everything like that. Uh, yeah. Keeping it censored. Um, mm -hmm, and course. so, um, and so, you know, just the feeling of, you know, you, you're not believed on, on what you're doing or what you're talking about, um, or you don't know what you're doing. And so, you know, or, oh, you must not be experiencing that, or you don't belong here. Things like that, um, happen or you're overlooked. Um, and so things like that is what I would say. Um, I can say that for myself too, um, mm -hmm. going into, excuse me, to the healthcare field. And like, I know I've talked on this podcast about PCOS, mm -hmm. um, polycystic ovary syndrome, and I really harp on it because people <laughs> need to know and it affects a lot of people. And sadly, a lot of people don't know until later when they, um, you know, one of the largest side effects is infertility and right. you don't know until it's too late. Um, if you're having a child is too late for you and that's your end result. Um, there's always adoption. But anyways, off that soapbox. Um. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, because like I, I brought that up because like you said, you, you yeah. mentioned before you had PCOS. And yeah, then... and just the amount of like doctors and nurses that I went through and didn't pick it up. Just was like, this is normal. This couldn't happen to you. This doesn't count to you, whatever. And so like, you're not, you're not believed. And it's like, okay, I haven't had a period in 45 days. And they're like, okay, it's fine. Like, that doesn't seem like it's fine. Yeah. So, you know, it's like, it's, it's things where like, you want to be believed and I'm telling you what's going on, but you're not listening to me. You're not believing me. So things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Like the, the reason why I brought it up is because I, I, I think the two of us or three of us actually, since there's three of us, duh, I could count. <laughs> the three of us have heard this trending on the news. I don't know their name. I'm so sorry. Um, the, the person who used Gorilla Glue I hair. do not know their name either, but I know exactly who you're okay, talking about. Okay, so, so this person did something a little <laughs> strange, or she, she used glue on her hair, um, but the only person who was able to help her fix the issue or find a solution that won't let her shave off the rest of her head or lose all her hair is that she actually had to go to a doctor that specialized in natural hair for your community. <laughs> so I was just like, the fact that she went through Twitter, multiple consultations from other doctors who were, I assume, predominantly white, and it's just like they couldn't figure it out, and they're like, "Well, it looks like you know, got it, got to nick it." But then all it took was some relatively like home remedies that you can find at home, like aloe vera, some oils, and just I, I think from what I saw from the video, the Twitter video of her coming out of the OR room, it's just like just wet hair. I think they just had to heavily wash it. But yeah. the fact that there had to be specializations just for that. And it took that long. That's what made me a little sad about it. It's like, how many... And then, not just for her, but for anyone who is uh, P POC or, you know, biracial, multiracial. It's just like, how how many doctors did it take for them to find the doctor that fits for them? Yeah. And it sucks because that it, it could be based on your zip code, your insurance type, and all that. But it's not a blanket all solution. And sometimes your doctors just don't fit with you and it could be something that has some inherent racial bias to it whether it's the district itself or the person who is performing their duties which is definitely against their oath but sometimes that happens yeah. but yeah i just wanted to bring that up because it's just like oh that's not great and also just uh just a tangent off of that um i just read this recently i think yesterday or earlier this morning about um the vaccination codes for mm -hmm. I don't, this is going on YouTube, so I don't think I'm allowed to say the name 
<laughs> but uh, the big C-19. Mm-hmm. The big C-19. Uh, so according to parts of LA, from, from the article that I read, that there are some codes that are handed out that you have to sign up for in order to make an appointment to get vaccinated. But uh, somehow those codes got leaked. And the proportion of white Americans getting vaccinated in comparison to Blacks, Latinos, and Asians were miles apart. And uh, I was reading the Twitter feed of where I found this uh, the, the site on. They hit two things. It's like, the people who have done it to support their own families, like, I got the code by chance. I'm going to send the other codes to the rest of my friends and family members because I want them to be safe. Um, that was like, that in its way is fine. You're thinking about yourself, you're thinking about your family. And that's that's a normal reaction to do. You want to make sure your, your people are safe. But then at the same time, <laughs> we're cutting out on the people who actually do need it. So the elderly um, and our minority groups. So it's just like, that sucks. And the numbers don't lie. But also the the company that was running these vaccination codes had to, when they realized this, they had to also improve some couple of things. Like we need to make sure that the people who got these codes are the people that they are and that they can't send these codes. That means ID checks, camera checks uh, for when they come in and come out. Otherwise, um, it'll get out of control. So in this case, they are already going round about the, um, the consequences of their actions. Uh, but that is just something that they still, that's something that still exists, that there is still discrimination in just at the financial level. And then I mean, there was the one in racial level. Yeah. There was the one in Florida. Mm-hmm. Um, Manatee is the city um, and was one of the board directors. And she wanted to make sure there was a quote VIP list for people yes. to get oh, COVID oh, shots. Awesome. And so the VIP list was for a certain zip code. And that zip code made over a hundred thousand dollars a year. And she's like, I know I did it and I did it. I'm sorry now, but sorry I did now. what I did. Yeah, you're sorry because you got caught. Did but... she like step down at least? Or yeah, was she, she resigned? Like, oh, sorry. I don't believe she did. Um, uh, what? But, I'm not but yeah, she, but she got caught because she was like, I, yes, I sent this out, but I wanted to ensure that these people on this VIP list were able to get their shots. And it's just like another case in Florida when, you know, two young ladies try to dress up as old ladies. Yeah, yeah, that one. <laughs> yeah, in line. Get shots. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's like, you know, I, I understand, you know, the, the need and the want to get your shot. I understand that. Mm-hmm. We're trying to move as fast as we can, but cutting the line just makes it worse and just makes, you know, it makes it a lot harder. Mm -hmm. And also creates a lot of more misinformation, too. So, you know, it just kind of sucks. But just that level of discrimination and racism that's happening, you know, it's fun. It's so much fun. It's no, it's yeah, it's not fun. (laughs) Well, well, that was totally sarcasm. (laughs) But yeah, sometimes honestly, okay, sarcasm just flies over me. So sorry about that. Whoever's listening to me live is like, yo, is Jan Rainey okay? Like, can she not read? It's like, okay, a lack of social interaction makes my social cues die a little bit more on the inside. Okay, just putting that out there. <laughs> just, yeah. just putting that out there. Um, also, I wanted to bring that up because not only uh, those instances of cutting lines, cutting corners, it's like every, I, I, I am a firm believer that everyone will get their chance, um, but it's just a matter of who deserves to get it first. Obviously, frontline workers should have priority, but also the elderly and to those who are at the biggest risk factor and that into in my opinion okay this again again my opinion my opinion um people who people who live in big risk communities so poor areas they they do need some extra help and that means bigger outreach efforts and i think that was the problem with this part of la is that they didn't do bigger outreach efforts because not everyone has landlines i don't it's like they're towing the line the zip code or whatever or they have no access to a, a way that they could get these codes so they could get in line and stuff like that. Um, but those are just some of like those little things that some counties or some governmental places just need to be better at. Yeah. And- Cause like, I know they have the really big one um, mm-hmm. where it's, you go to Dodger stadium, Yeah. but you know, if you are, if you don't have a car, How you can't drive through. 
I don't think the bus is going to sit there and let you stay there. That's mm-hmm. not how buses work. Um, so, you know, it'd be really great if, you know, say your local drugstore, um, mm-hmm. we all know what our local drugstores are. We're, yeah. not, we're not sponsored by we're them, not so sponsored I will not name drop them. Um, <laughs> but it, it would be really cool if, you know, if your local drugstore had the shots for you, like how they do the flu shots there. And that would be a really great way for people to come in who do work late because the drugstores are open late in order to give you your shot because you know, you may not be able to afford to, you, you can't afford to miss work, but you also can't afford to get the Rona. So you're <laughs> stuck in this loop, you know? So, you know, that would be a really great thing. Um, so if anyone knows anyone who can make that happen, please make that happen. Yeah. It's coming ex- strictly from Elise. This is her suggestion. She wants, yeah. you know, whatever benefits come out of it. She wants that. She wants I do. Like, someone, please. Like, <laughs> yes. honestly, it's, I've, haven't heard much about it here in San Diego or Chula Vista. So it's like, I'm kind of, I feel like I get most of my news from Twitter these days about Chula Vista and Such San Diego news. I know, no, I'm serious. <laughs> I'm serious. How do you think I know this stuff, man? It's like, because I don't hear it in, in, in my news, but that's, that's just something else. Sorry, Jess. Looks like you want to say something. I was just going to say too, I think the funny or not the funny thing is, but like another thing that ties with um, why more, like a majority of white people are getting like injections because um, especially in San Diego, like healthcare workers are a priority. I think it's also intersectional with being that more, um, I would say like white people or like people who are more affluent I- in our society mm-hmm. are in these spaces where they have more like white collar jobs. Does that, you know what I'm saying? So, right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. There would be a larger number of people getting vaccinated because these are the people in those spaces. There's not a lot of people of color um in these spaces of like being healthcare workers like they're essential workers yes but they're not necessarily health healthcare workers mm-hmm. and I think you see a lot yeah. of intersectionality with that and that in itself is an institution of racism like medicine is built it's, on racism and I yeah. think you know that's something that we're gonna touch on today a lot yeah yeah um, it's it's a lot of that there's also other things I wanted to highlight but I wasn't sure when to bring this up but actually I think we could bring it up now um now the best hmm now is the best. <laughs> now is the best time. Oh, it's because also it brings up the topic of homelessness. Yeah. Right. Experiencing homelessness. So I found this earlier this week. Um, thank you, ethical students, for making this thread. Um, basically, it's something called Root Shock, written by Mindy Full, full of Love. Full of Love. That's kind of cute. It's like full of love. But if I butchered it, I'm so sorry if you're ever listening to this in the future. But uh, from her website, uh, Root Shock is defined as traumatic stress response to losing all or part of one's emotional ecosystem. And that includes housing. So this word was coined to describe uh, the Urban Renewal Act of 1949 and the Jim Crow laws. So I know you can see that from the, the, the Google Doc, but that's what I... So, and then I highlighted this part. Housing is a significant social determinant of health, which is why it's so important to address the systematic racism still inherent in our practices. And I think we all know housing is expensive, especially at our young age. Oh. Housing, is a ni- <laughs> <laughs> housing is a nightmare. Rent's a, rent's a pain. Like, Even buying is really difficult. Like they make it very difficult. It's yeah. really, you need to know the jargon or you need the money. So it's just like, Financial sometimes literacy. both. Sometimes mm-hmm. both. And I am embarrassed to say I don't have that same financial literacy as some of the best homeowners in the world, but it's scary and daunting. And the reason why I brought this up is because like big news that hit last week, uh, Texas had a big snowstorm. I have family and, there and it's 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 I crazy. Friends, I had friends there, friends, doctors to be, and I was pissed. Let's let's put that lightly. Um but yeah, so because people were very worried about themselves and their homes and their families, as they should, as they should, it's a big freak snow, act, like freak storm that wasn't supposed to come, but it came anyways. And there were sub suboptimal temperatures and all of that. Um, but when I was reading all my friends who were saying like, oh, we don't have power, we don't have water, we don't have ways to make, to get warm, to uh, bathe themselves, feed themselves because the everything was cleared out from the stores. Everyone's trying to find wood to like put in their fireplaces. Their houses were not meant. And I was like, what about, what about the individuals who don't have homes? The, Every day. Yeah. So I was just like, what the heck happened to them? And then obviously, yes, I saw those pieces of news, like GoFundMes or hotels or motels, like housing, housing these people who are on the streets uh, just so they could stay warm. So they don't have bodies littering in the streets frozen to death. And also just like, 
that is a significant problem. And San Diego is what the fourth, fourth biggest city to have a big houselessness crisis. I think it's like yeah, third or fourth. It's really big. It's like, what if we had that freak accident here? How, how would how would we help these individuals? You know, it's just like we have the. Thankfully, we have the common, the comic content, com- the, com- con- the convention what? center. <laughs> I only know it's for Comic Con. Okay, sorry, the convention okay. center. But yeah. I know that they've housed individuals there. But I know they had to slowly remove, remove People. them because yeah. yeah, because they can't do it forever. But it's just like we have that, thankfully. But it won't house everybody. But then when you think yeah. about Texas too, it's just like how how Texas were they supposed huge. to land? Yeah, Texas is yeah. huge. Gerrymandering is still a thing. It's a big, big thing. <laughs> uh, you want to I- explain to our viewers really quick what gerrymandering is, just in case they don't know? Because I know I've, I had to explain this to people before, just because okay. it's a concept that's not taught everywhere. I feel like I've been running my mouth for too long. Does any any of you two want to say it? <laughs> well, like, I guess, like, a really broad brushstroke of it is, is um, so if you live in a district, say you live in District 12, um, when it comes time to vote or when it comes time to set laws and everything, and, um, the lawmakers can change the outline of district 12 to be something of like district 13 or to you know just to incorporate more people that they want towards a certain neighborhood or to skew out a certain neighborhood and so what that does is is that really hurts people um you know who don't get to be a part of something. So say like one of the things that you're voting on is public transportation, but most of the people who need public transportation are a part of the black and brown community in this one zip code. Well, if I just change the way the map looks to include, you know, these people who don't use, um, who don't use public transportation, well, guess what? I can vote that down and I can use that money that I was going to use on public transportation towards something else and I can keep the rest of that money. And so, I mean, that's a, sad story to explain it but mm-hmm. that's basically broad brush strokes how gerrymandering works mm-hmm. changing the system in order to get what you want yep. yeah this could also affect um taxes like so if you know schools get um, money from the housing around you so obviously if you have communities that are um where the housing is co- you know cost less then that school is going to receive less money and so they get less mm-hmm. funding and they don't have as quality of an, a quality education um and then you know, on the flip side of that, if a, you know, community was then incorporated into a richer community, then the housing, the cost of that housing goes up. So the people who are lived there originally often get pushed out. And that is what we know as gentrification. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And also um, house, housing, funding for schools comes from property taxes. And, you know, you get most of your property taxes from homes. And so, you know, these quote unquote lower income neighborhoods, you will notice that there's a lot more apartment styles where mm-hmm. there's not as much property tax coming from that. So, you know, you have other places where they have lots of homes and, you know, like La Jolla and there's <laughs> there's 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 plenty of homes there and those the value of those homes are huge so the school district is considered better because they get more funding from those taxes so fun fact sad fact sad ya. fact yeah like gerrymandering was worse back then but now because politics and jargon like we talked about it's very easy to kind of like hide that under fluffy words or yeah. too many complicated words because you can see it on maps like all you have to do is just look it up it's like where is your district in this zip code in this certain line and you'll find it you can see like how not rectangular or circulars it's like woo! you got some pretty crazy designs like wow that looks like a drawing that i did when i was five so yeah yeah exactly <laughs> it's dumb because you can have a population where say like five hundred thousand people live in this district and you have that itty bitty bit right here and it's still part of the district line but you know that's kind of it's kind of dumb but that's one way we still keep racism in politics or just keeping minorities out of the picture yeah. uh, so we can fight for better, better schools, better, like I said, public transit, better, better roads, right? Yeah. Access to treatment and all those things. And ah! <laughs> it's, it's just when you really start to connect the dots, it's, it's just like, just like this, this is a lot, but it's a lot to of work moving forward. But I think it's like, at least we know where to start. And it's like completely tearing everything down and starting over. <laughs> oh, I love this because I, I, I just I just scroll down to check out some like some of these stats and I could bridge this with another stat that I put on mine it says black and African American people living below the poverty, I think like living below the poverty line, right? 
No, oh, they're Bernie Sanders, Our Revolution. Go read it. It's good. <laughs> Black, uh, Black and African-American people living below the poverty line, I'm assuming that's what you mean, are mm -hmm. twice as likely to report serious psychological distress than those living double over the poverty line. If you made it, you aren't going to tell a therapist about your problems, even if you're having issues. That's true. And the reason why I want to brought this up, because I want to bridge this to something that I've found, is that the inherent distrust that Black and, uh, Black and African-Americans and even Asian and Latinx um, face that we have a general distrust for medicine and treatment. And that is also because of racial bias that exists. So, and like, like that quote says, like, if you made it, what do you have to complain about? It's like, no, you're valid. Complain about it. Complain that it sucks. Complain that it's hard. Complain that you're hurting because you deserve to get treated properly. But exactly. That could also come from within your homes. Like, you know, suck it up buttercup is like, no, <laughs> don't do that. You don't, it's like, you don't have to hide pain. It's not a, I know we said this loads of times, right? It's not a competition of who suffers worse. Oh, oh my God. And yeah. who could come out of it alive or, you know, like passing by moment to moment. It's just like, no, it's not a, it's not a competition. If you're hurting and your experience is like, if we're like plainly comparing, like if you experience a death in the family and I experience a death, like a, a dying pet who has the bigger grief, nobody, like we're suffering the same. We're suffering a loss. So those things, but yeah. It's annoying, but those are those are some of the things I think about when it comes to those racial biases, like just in medicine, just in in general. Like I've it says here, according to the Kaiser Family Foundation, uh, six out of ten Black Americans trust their doctors do the right thing, compared to eight out of ten white Americans. Six out of ten? That's a that's a D. <laughs> That's for, a D. For do not trust. <laughs> <D> for, <laughs> there, there, there you go. D for do not trust. You know, or like uh, if anyone plays Among Us, like that's suspicious. That's sus. Like straight up sus. Six out of ten. Do like, if that was a restaurant with ten out of ten ratings. I'm not going to that restaurant because I won't trust a chef. Yeah. To do their thing because I. What if I get food poisoning? And that is something. And then, fourteen states. I don't know which 14 states. <laughs> I can I can list them later. Uh, showing vaccine coverage among white people is twice among Black or Latino communities. The hesitancy caused by centuries of, of biases, injustice can potentially cause immeasurable suffering and preventable deaths, which I think we I think we we, we could all could imagine. Um, a lot of the deaths that have happened, aside from the people who are at high risk, is people who are um, on the poverty line or below it. Yeah, because no resources, no medicines and if they have to work jobs that put them at bigger risk whether if it's like food service or anything like that just to get by you're at a bigger risk and some people have been quite irresponsible in the pandemic uh and it makes it harder for everyone else to get to be healthier and safer and that's just the value of human life i i feel like people just forget like it's not I don't think it should be like based on color or race or creed or whatever. It's just it's human life. Can we just be a little bit more nicer to people? Can we take care of people? It's like I hate I hate it. I hate it so much. Like when when did we when did we go from disrespecting other people just based by the color of their skin? You know, it's just stupid. We're all this whole country is built on that, and that's like the thing. It's so dumb. I thought we were past all this, but then every day in the news, I just get surprised more and more. So it's like, wow, people are really dumb. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, sorry, yeah. off that soapbox. But I just, that's just some of the things in, in medicine news today uh, and some a little bit of some of these racial biases that we still see today. So will that change in the next coming weeks? Ask me again five episodes from now. <laughs> <laughs> if it has changed, that's like five weeks. So, so yeah. sometimes soon, but anyways, uh, we're to transition from this because apparently I'm bad at segues. So well, I mean, <laughs> we could also like keep talking about like the distrust because I know a lot of the mm -hmm. wow. distrust, um, you know, as I am a black woman, mm -hmm. um, and I use black and African American interchangeably. Okay. Um, and I don't mind if y'all do as well. Um, I know a lot of the distrust comes from just the history of you know not doing the right thing. You know, mm -hmm. the Tuskegee um, experiment that went on for many years afterwards. Um, you know, and no, I am not going to explain that to people. Go look it up and read it and find out what people did to my ancestors and see how awful that was. Um, and and so also, wait, wait, slight, slight, slight addition here. Uh, if you haven't heard the Dr. Henrietta episode that we had, there's definitely a lot more on that too. Uh, but also, you know, mature, mature warnings there, but also listen to that episode because we listen, listen to our sweet dulcet tones. Anyways, continue. 
<laughs> but yeah, that was like what I was gonna like segue into. Like that's a huge reason as well as is Henrietta Lacks. And a lot of people sadly don't even know about that story and you know about how doctors lied and you know didn't say that they were her cells and they said like oh it was they call them HeLa cells because they didn't want people to know that it came from this black woman that they took her cells without her knowledge and you know so that that's a whole big distress in itself so it's like Mm -hmm. if I'm going to go to you for an operation and I already know in the past that you haven't been doing right or you haven't been doing right by my community how can I trust that when you put me over I won't be the next Henrietta Lacks right there okay sad to say this okay I know I knew of Henrietta Lacks in high school but I think my brain glossed over the fact that I didn't know she was black they don't usually mention it to be yeah, honest. They don't. Like they don't. Yeah. So when I saw that on the on Twitter, because this is where I found, it, I was just like, "She's black." I didn't know. So I was just like, "Oh wow, that's really a big no no." And then obviously, like John Hopkins, too, which is a prestigious medical school that everyone like Fonz was like, "Hey, don't forget, don't forget, don't forget." They did something kind of sus. Not kind of. They did something really bad and really just disregards everything that we know about informed consent. Um, mm-hmm. they they stole cells. Yes, it's been great it's been great for cell study and everything but let's not forget this was taken from somebody against their will and they profited over it for years until they gave her you know po- i don't want to pronounce this after death post whom you salute <laughs> i can't english i'm so sorry you know post-humorous. what i mean humorous there you go yes there yes, you go that after the after the fact years went by and then they gave her credits yeah. yeah, they didn't even give him money. It was just credit. I was just like, it's like, dude, they, they deserve yeah. royalties. Just like, of they're still being used today. So it's just like, yeah. I mean, cells are great. Multiply over time, even if they are well taken out of the body. But it's just like, still, that's still not okay. And that's something that is very concerning. Uh, that's why I also want to ask you, Elise. So, um, you know, I already talked about that one, uh, that one woman who put Gorilla Glue in her hair. And then mm-hmm. she had to go to... Uh, some to so a doctor who looks like her, who knows her, knows yeah. her body type and physique. Do you like? Do you go out of your way to find physicians who look like you, um, just so you can feel more comfortable telling issues about your body, or do you sometimes have to sometimes fuck it up I, and go to a, a predominantly <laughs> white physician? I'm just curious. Just curious. <laughs> sometimes I do, and sometimes I don't, um, because there is like a layer of when I don't, because whatever I'm going in for, I don't want to be judged. Um, so it's it's okay. like it's like you want to share all the information, but you don't want to share all the information because it's already there's already a position of authority. Right. And then there's already the background of like your own background, your own community, and like what the standard I'm sorry, and use this in quotes. They can't see the quotes on the listening. Oh uh, no, I'll put this in the video format, but yeah, you can use it. You can use it. So in like space. like in like quote of like what is the standard and like what is supposed to be happening for someone my age and my gender expression. Mm-hmm. Um and so, you know, it's it's like I don't really want to because I feel this judgment. And if I wanted this judgment, I would have just talked to my family and I wouldn't have come to a doctor. Um, uh, so okay, there, okay. there are sometimes things like that, but sometimes I don't even have a choice. I will just go to the doctor and it's whoever is there. Um, and I may see a few nurses. I have Kaiser. Mm-hmm. Um, so I may see a few nurses. Um, and, but that's, that's pretty much it. I don't, as I look back, I don't think that I have um, experienced a black doctor or a black female doctor in um, wow. the about wow, really? four different Kaisers that I've been to. Yeah, so um, huh. that's, that's fun. Because I had black PAs who did my oh. blood test for me, which was really cool. It was pretty awesome. It was just, uh, I guess it was just a little strange because I didn't, they were from a, a, uh, a smaller clinic. So it's mm-hmm. just like, oh, that's cool, though, because that means it's someone that is more like me. But they like yeah. to say if you had Kaiser or anything that's a little more affluent in more affluent neighborhoods in some Kaisers that I go to for some flu shots or TB tests. All I had were white nurses or white PAs, white physicians. They're like, all right, let's get everything checked out and sorted. I'm just like, OK, OK. Sometimes I feel like I just go in there blind and I'm just like nodding along. But just like. Is there someone else who understands, like you said, who understands me with my background, with my gender expression, who won't judge me, yeah. you know? It's- yeah. Yeah. They're usually working the front desk, taking my copay. 
there. But but not wearing the scrubs. Ah, uh, wearing the <sighs> Well, if you had it in your like let's say insurance wasn't a thing, would you go out of your would you actively search for like a black female doctor to be searching care for? I think I would. Oh. I think I would. Um, I just, I'm blessed enough um, since I'm 23, I'm still under my parents. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm, I'm still under my parents' health care insurance. So I don't, I don't have to adult just yet and, you know, search for health care insurance. So right now I'm, I'm doing pretty okay. Um, but I know when I, I know like, as I went to San Diego for school and I had to find a new doctor and that was a whole experience because when I was here in Los Angeles, they just sent me a paper and said, hey, this is your doctor. Um, but yeah, I, went I don't to, like that. Yeah, but then I went to San Diego. They're like, oh, you get to choose. Here, you can look on the website. But looking on the website, I couldn't find anyone. Um, and so I was like, okay. And then if I did find one person, they weren't accepting new patients. And so um, that's that's a thing to consider, which kind of sucks. Yeah, that's... That's the problem that I had to with finding like finding doctors because that you could look up, but none of them looked like you. I only had one. I had one pediatrician who, because I was under my parents' insurance for a time, and she was Filipino, and I thought that was really cool, pretty much. But she talked a lot like my mom, so I feel like I was getting scolded by my mom for some of my <laughs> See? health issues. Now you understand. <laughs> you understand what I mean. Yeah, yeah, sometimes, but it was more comfortable too in a way because it's like, yeah, I'm getting scolded by another. Air, ver, air quote version of my mom but you know she is entitled to keep all my secrets unless you know it's it's a it's if my life is in danger then you know that's another yeah. thing but uh, yeah yeah sorry that's good no no, no keep going keep going i'm gonna piggyback off this but yeah keep going. but the, that was that so i thought that was like cool but then obviously i aged out right or i had a job and i was able to get my own insurance and i was like oh cool but my doctors or pas were predominantly why? Or like you said, they did brush off some of those concerns that I have because there was a concern um, one time that a phlebotomist tried to pull out my blood, but didn't use gloves. Uh, the gloves to like feel the feel the vein. So if this is mm -hmm. the ungloved hand, they'll be like feeling it. And I don't like that. Like, it's just like in my head, like if you're already sterilize it, you don't need to be touching that spot anymore. Oh, they sterilize it and then touch it? Because I thought they like touched it and then they sterilize it again after. To my memory, they didn't. Oh, gross. And then they were just like, you know, find it because I, I have very deep veins, right? So they're trying to they're trying to find it, you know, scrub it. And then I was just like, I didn't bring it up because this person. Well, like it was white and I, just, I didn't know how to respond. It's like, you shouldn't be doing that because in my head, I worked in lab diagnostics. I was like, that's not clean. You touched me again or like you touch you touch a spot that you already sterilized or maybe they did sterilize. But I just didn't feel comfortable having them just touching the skin without having gloves on because like what if you prick your prick me then prick your your finger then we're just mixing blood and i don't know what kind of blood history you have but then if it your blood touches my blood then it's just like no <laughs> just no <laughs> but i brought it up again after and then you know they reprimanded or they did whatever they had to do but i was just like i couldn't trust that place again yeah so there's there's that their issue there that the the idea of trust and i was just like man i lost a lot of sleep over that because i was stressed it's just like is that the right thing to do? It's like, why did I wait so long? It's like, oh, I was gonna get ready to get talked down or get looked down while it's like, no, they did everything right. They got the training for it's like training don't always mean jack sometimes, you know. But like in, in a field like this, I, I expect proper protocol. But you know, I don't like giving excuses sometimes when it comes to because like I know my parents do blood or Jay Drew blood, it's just like it's like, well, I can't feel it with the the gloves on. It's just like then learn because <laughs> I can't. I don't, I don't want to risk my health over that you can't or find me someone else that does. And the second time I went for that blood check, I actually asked someone else to do it for me. It's like, can't feel it. It's like, get me someone else who can because I'm not going to I'm not going to expose myself to whatever you could potentially have if you hurt yourself too, especially if it's uh, blood work. But that's just that's just my soapbox line because I was really angry about it. Um, but yeah, sorry, guys, go ahead. You said you wanted to piggyback back off this. The um, no, you're trust. good. You're good. Um, I feel like my yeah i feel like all of my doctors were like typically pocs um and when i did have when i was older um and i aged out of my peds the doctor i had was also filipinx and she was kind of like at that age where she wasn't like my mom's age but she wasn't like in my age she was like i think like gen what's the generation above us why why yeah. i think she's a little older than that oh wait no that's Boomer? generation x Sorry, right. not booming yeah. like that, but yeah, so, so there's Gen Z, Gen, and then Gen Gen Y is uh -huh. millennial, and then Gen uh -huh. X Gen is X. 
Yeah. So yeah, I, yeah. I think she was a Gen X because she was like maybe in like her 30s, 30s or 40s. And even though I felt like she, I don't know, like I felt like she understood where my culture is coming from, but because she was kind of on the younger end, she, I didn't get that vibe where she was like judging me. And I feel like now that's what I look for in doctors, like that they're typically usually like a little bit younger and they're usually like POCs. Like even now when I got, um, cause I just got a new insurance and I just got like, um, I was looking for a new doctor. I'm always like, okay, who's going to understand my experiences that they're not going to like question, like, why did they do that? Or like, that doesn't make any sense. Like, my culture, why do I my not do anything? Do you could do whatever you want. <laughs> it's like my culture doesn't have to make sense to you. It just you just have to like understand that it that's what it is, and you just have to kind of like take it and kind. Of, I don't know. And take it with like, a grain of salt. Take it with a grain of salt. We're just I here to get a grain of salt. You better just listen to me and believe me. Kind <laughs> of. <laughs> that's true. That would be great. I, that'd be great. Yeah, because it's like things that you experience. Like I was in South Dakota, and I experienced racism, and that was something that. I personally haven't experienced just because I in South in you know in California you're it's pretty like if they're gonna talk smack to you they're not, or if they're gonna be racist it's either gonna be very covert or it's not gonna be to your face and this time mm -hmm. I had very like explicit racism like to my face in this predominantly white state like this white very Republican state and I was just like it kind of shook me because I was like I've never had anyone that blunt come to me before and I was telling my therapist about it and she was a person of color and she just like she was able to empathize with me because she's also experienced it and I was just all like oh thank god like well not, not just me but, you know. too, but like i was just all like you understand like how like upsetting this can be and it's just like yeah you didn't have to i'm yeah. not saying that you didn't have to relive it because of course you had to relive it to tell your therapist mm -hmm. but you'd have to extensively relive it um extensively relive it by saying you know all the ins and outs because yeah. uh, because they just know mm -hmm. it, it's just this unspoken bond sadly mm -hmm. that we have and we just know yeah mm -hmm. yeah and it's I, it's it, I hate that sometimes that's just how it works like you have to go through similar things in order to empathize better with each other and like in therapy or in uh, medicine in general so it's like oh yeah I went through that too it sucks it's like yeah oh wow you get it you know I don't have to explain these words to you these phrases that they used against me or, or to why other it makes me feel like that way or yeah, their favorite sometimes people's favorite words to throw I was like you shouldn't let people have that kind of power over you like oh was, oh really <laughs> I was about to say okay you go through what I go through then you'll understand and get back to me on if you're still going to use that phrase. Yes. You shouldn't let people go over here. It's like, have you not seen the history of our people in general? Just, you know, not just like, like Asian community too. It's just like, you know, words have power over. It's like, we were imperialized too? Yeah. Hello? <laughs> yeah. What words did we have at the time when they had bigger weapons, artillery, and we had none of those? Just like, doing our own thing, and yeah, you decided. Yeah, then. Hello, hey, we're, we're doing here. this now. Yeah, yeah. it's. Uh, well, also inside, I also want to bring this up. If you are someone who is not currently insured uh, in California, uh, there is a fine. You do need to be under insurance, and you could sign up for. I believe it's Cover California. This is not. Yes. It's it's. This is not a sponsorship, but this is just so so you know. You do need to be on. You need to be under some form of health insurance to avoid a. I believe it's like a seven hundred dollar fine something like that um but yeah just putting that out there um when it comes to costs and finding doctors and getting network properly uh do your research before you sign up on a certain company and then through i guess like through all of our recommendation find someone who understands you or looks like you or will un like know your experiences so you don't get judged or shunned for people who think otherwise because your business is your own business but if you do need help with your body or your needs you shouldn't be judged for it I mean, that should be decreed in general medicine, but still happens, still get judged. Oh, you shouldn't have gone this, blah, 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 blah. It's like, I'm still a living, breathing human. I could potentially catch anything from the people yeah. I talk to. Like C19, that's definitely a big one. But yeah, there's that. So sorry. That's like a different type of segue, but it's cool. It all counts. It all counts. It's, it's it's for education, like I said. Um, since we were talking a little bit about like insurance, and then if we didn't have insurance, what we would do? What would we have done to find other alternatives instead of going to our predetermined physicians or PAs or MAs? Um, yeah. Well I, well, I know, and um, I go to therapy. I love therapy. Therapy. I think if you can afford therapy, it's really great. Um, and you know. A lot of um, there's a lot of issue with me personally, um, just even thinking about therapy because it's like one, what do I have 
to be complaining about. Um, and then two, it's 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 a in the black community in a lot of POC communities, it's saving face. It's like we're not going to tell other people that we're doing bad. We're just going to keep that in our little bubble, in our little home, and we can know that we're not doing okay. But we're not going to let anyone else know that we're not doing okay. Or, yeah. Or just go pray about it is definitely the big one. Um, and so, you know, it's, and I'm not saying, you know, if religion is your thing, religion is my thing, mm -hmm. that you shouldn't go pray about it. But sometimes, you know, you want that someone talking back to you, someone who's unbiased to kind of let you know what pathway you should be going on. And that was really helpful. Well, it was, it is really helpful for me um, just to have someone to, to talk to. And um, I think it's really good. I know that it's, it's hard to find um, mm -hmm. if someone does take your insurance. Um, and then, you know, work is another thing if you can get off work to do that. Um, I know we're in the space right now where we're doing Zooms and uh, my therapist calls me. But will they go back to doing that once things, quote unquote, go back to normal? Um, will that keep happening? Because that works for me. It was great to not worry about having to figure out okay i gotta miss work at this time and i gotta run over here across mm -hmm. town catch the trolley catch the bus to go see my therapist and then catch the trolley and the bus to get back to, to get back home but now it's just on the phone i can you know take a walk and keep doing what i'm doing um and so you know that's thankfully a privilege that i have but that's also because i wanted to seek that help not saying that um, people in my community don't want to seek the help but it's also a thing of why would I go seek the help? I don't need anyone else to know that I'm not doing well. That's for me and my issues to worry about. So that. Yeah. Re I, I know that now religion and spirituality is becoming a saving grace for a lot of people who are staying at home lately because it's hard staying cooped up at home all the time. Um, quarantine's been rough. Um, I definitely did turn to religion and spirituality to help some of those like darker thoughts that comes that sometimes therapy didn't help with but i do understand the idea of saving saving face like saving face to like my parents like oh i sprained my ankle i probably should go to the like probably get that checked up but i'm just like i didn't want to take time away from my parents from work because they always yeah. complained before like can't take off work for you blah 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 you know it's too time consuming it's like what am i going to do because they were really short on payments at the end of the month right bills or food on the table so sometimes that was ingrained in me when I was younger. Save face even from your own family. Yeah. Um, which sucked. Uh, having a therapist as an adult and say, like, you don't need to keep saving face anymore. It's like, I don't. But sometimes my parents don't know how to deal with that information. It's just like, oh, I don't need to save face. Like, oh, but why are you sad? It's like, I'll tell you why I'm sad. They're like, oh, you didn't need to tell me that. It's like, I wanted to know. <laughs> you wanted to know. It's like, who am I going to talk about this with then? If I need to, if my therapist suggests I need to talk or unbox some of these issues with my parents or with people that hurt me or stuff like that. And it's just like, you didn't want to know? Don't ask. <laughs> but saving saving face, you don't need to do that anymore. Um, but I know that sometimes it's hard for people that it's just been ingrained in their systems for too, too, too long. Um, but when you do see those people, I urge them to just take more time and care. Uh, we're all struggling. Like we said earlier in, the, in, the, in this episode, it's not a competition who suffers more. Be patient and be kind. Be compassionate. Literally the biggest component of uh, humanity is just compassion for others. Especially, like you said, uh, turning towards someone that could be God or a higher being uh, to share your problems with and having an unbiased response, whatever that feels like to you, is a beautiful, beautiful thing. And therapy is another version of that too. Except you just have more feedback of yeah. what could be done or what could be adjusted so that you could live a healthier life. But that's just my soapbox on it. Yeah, do you have anything to add? <laughs> There's a frown. <laughs> you okay? No. no, we're good. Yeah. Yeah, no, we're good. It's good. Yeah. There is great. I haven't had a therapist in a while. So um, I do need to get back on it since now that um, it's always just nice to talk to somebody who just gets you but i probably would consider trying to find someone who's more like me the the person i had is latinx and she's a she's generation what's older than x boomers boomers she's a boomer oh. sorry baby boomers baby boomer she's a <laughs> definitely not a baby anymore but she she's a baby boomer but she understood 
a majority of what I went through, but she is also not from my community. So she doesn't understand some of those like very selective things that I go through that in her experience she never went through. So it's just like, well, yeah, that's that blows, but um, maybe further down the line, I'll find somebody who fits those proper needs for me, but that is something for another time. <laughs> okay. Um, let me just check back all my notes. We definitely went roundabout of everywhere. Oh, there's that one quote, too. Since we were talking about issues, uh, not issues, talking about mental health, and I think it's another stat for everybody. Uh, at least you want to read that? <laughs> the one at the bottom. Do, do, do. Yes. The one That's a big number. <laughs> <laughs> Minority groups who are overrepresented in essential services are more exposed to the virus. As of May 2020, Black people in Chicago and Louisiana comprised of 30. Oh, wait, 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 no, no, no. The bottom, bottom, bottom. Yours, <gasps> not mine. Bottom, bottom. Ooh, mine. Oh, mine. Yeah, not, not. I could go back to mine later, but like yours, Ooh, yours right there. Okay, okay. There's a lot of statistics. About mental health, There's a lot of statistics on this note. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so of the um, U.S. population, 46 million um, people um, who make up that population is the Black population. And 16%, which is about 4.8 people, um, reported mental illness. And 22% percent of those, which is about 1.1 million, reported serious mental illness over the past year. And this past year would refer to 2019 from the um, MH National Health Organization. Um, yeah. Legit site. Yeah. <laughs> really, yes. It really is a legit site. <laughs> but that's just those who are reported. Um, you know, there can be people who are going through something, but again, are saving face and choose not, not to talk to. about it. You know, a lot of the people who are suffering the most suffer in silence. And one person that everyone knows is Robin Williams. You know, yep. he seemed like the happiest person in the world, had everything, you know, going for Slight trigger warning here. Um, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, but had everything going for him. But, you know, you don't know what someone's going through behind closed doors. So, you know, and he never really vocalized his pain. And so Robin Williams would be like, well, he's not white, sorry, he's not black, but um, he would be one of those two that would fall into the category of, you know, they are suffering, but suffering in silence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and just imagine the numbers if everyone did have, did have the courage to come out with their illnesses or open with their doctors or physicians to, so they could get the help. Because I could imagine, like, that's a very low percentage. I expect it to be just higher because like you said suffering in silence is part of a part of my like uh, it's I, I believe it's like communal not like communal i don't know if that's the right word for it a, a majority of our communities have that feeling saving that face shared experience yeah shared experiences shared experiences saving face i'm not going to talk to you this person about my issues like i even have a hard time talking to my friends for some of these things and even though i know that they would empathize or sympathize with me it's like no i know it exactly it's like yeah i just don't want to tell you because these are less complex trains of thoughts. Like, I don't want to because I know it stresses you out. It stresses me out. And I didn't know if either of us were all in the right headspace to talk about these things. So some of these things are very heavy. And sometimes that could be draining in friendships and relationships too. And then sometimes the only way you do talk about it is with uh, someone who's professional. But then even finding someone who fits you is hard enough as it is. And like I said, we talked about it, like the access, the zip codes, the travel uh, if we did this in person, telehealth has been super, super important lately, whether it's on the phone or through video, it helps with the access. But then if we branch it even further, we're not talking about internet. Like internet rates have gone up. Supply has been low. Say, telehealth has its own like network of issues that mm -hmm. also can be an issue I, for yeah. who don't have money to be spending on like Wi-Fi or on laptops or on, you know, like something that has a camera. Yeah, like, if you have a phone, you get to telehealth on your phone, but then what like, kind of you, phone do you have? <laughs> yeah, also, like, are you paying, like, for a certain amount of, like, data? So, like, can you, you are you, like, you know, crunched for data that you can't, you know, talk support a on? call? Yeah, support a call for too long. Or, like, do you have a stable Wi-Fi connection? Things like that. That statistic also made me wonder, like, how many 
of these people who are experiencing a mental in- illness are is that like statistic tied or like is there like state of mental being tied to a like racial disparity like houselessness or um yeah definitely not being able to living you know being in a low income area or like having to like work multiple jobs and it really makes me wonder like how many of these people wouldn't experience these mental illnesses had they had the same opportunities as someone who has more privilege like a white person um that's what really makes me wonder from what I could tell you from my experience as being an avid tutor for a couple of months, I'm not going to name drop the district. Um, I had a lot of kids from the school district who are POCs. And there is one individual who I was tutoring with and uh, she was really upset. She had really in and out in internet. And I could tell from the house, just like just from my, or from what I could see, you're allowed to share your cameras. The students are allowed to share their cameras if they want to. If they don't want to, for whatever reason, they don't have to. They just have to let the teacher know, right? But this one, by chance, she shared her photo. And I could tell just from the housing, so it seems like an apartment, really small, potentially cramped. And I don't know if it means she has multiple families living with her because multi-generational families are a big thing in Latinx, uh, Asian communities, and even um, the Black community too. Um, Cramped space, that's a thing. But also it's just when she complained about her internet problems, the first thing I thought was like, ooh, is it the money is it the the type of wi-fi the laptop you know i'm thinking about all these things like like can they afford this you know and some students have expressed dropping out of school because it's just too much the stress of it all and whether or not it's from they're on the uh poorer side of this district that i that i work for or if they're in the affluent side because you can see the difference like in just the webcams itself you can have students who have really nice rooms or they have big communal spaces like a big kitchen or a big living room but then on some students webcams are open they're very small very cramped you can see multiple beds or what have you and i'm just like <sighs> technology is great to help try to bridge a lot of these things in, in in covid times but at the same time it's it's also opening up a lot more of like i said these disparities that we don't see when we were too busy with our lives working nine to five now it's becoming more obvious. Uh, but yeah, like I said, telehealth is great for those things, but then that's still another issue to, to tack on. So money, internet, the technology, the time and the space. Because if you live with multiple families in your home, sometimes it's hard to get privacy if you don't have a closed door or you have to tell your brothers or sisters like, shh, I'm trying to take a call, you know, I'm trying to take class or I'm in a meeting. Oh. The amount of times my parents walked in during a podcast episode, it's hilarious. It's like, my door is closed. Don't come in. My door is open. You can we don't have in. closed doors here, Jim Rennie. Don't you know that? <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> <My mom laughs> do. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> What's wrong with me? Hello? Oh, my God. Close- oh, closing doors? Are you paying bills now? <laughs> Thankfully, my parents allowed me to have privacy. But I know that I know that was a phrase I was tossed around when I went to my friend's house. It's just like pre-COVID times. Like, back in high school. It's like, hey, if door is closed, you better be paying bills. I'm just like... Yeah. What 16 year old can pay bills right now? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> you can't have my $20 allowance I have every week. It's your own money still, but here you go. But it's like a little dollar. <sighs> also, I didn't, I didn't even get paid. It's like my first job. <laughs> but uh, that's just something I wanted to bring up too. So it's, uh, it's a little bit of a. I know, I know some school districts, I know um, even in LA here, um, are giving out um, Wi Fi. They mm-hmm. partnered with. Um, a phone company and cool. they were giving out they're giving out hotspots and some schools um were either giving out chromebooks um or ipads um in order so it all depends on your school but i know for my little brother at the charter school he goes to they sent him home they sent him home yeah me too uh they sent him home with a chromebook um and like one of my friends her sister they got the, like the little hotspot oh cool and, and that helps because um a lot of people live in her apartment and so if a lot of people are living there and a lot of people are going to school, that internet's going to be just a tad bit slow. So just that little extra, you know, help. leg up is is really helpful. So, yeah. So, I mean, definitely if anyone's listening to this podcast and if you can find that out while we're still in February, June's rolling around, but, you know, you still have school. If that's available to you, definitely use those resources. Yeah. I mean, it also ties to like what, your schools are doing to help fund you. I mean, we did talk about um, property taxes and like 
the amount of money that could go in into a neighborhood to give back to just like the Chromebooks, Hotspot, yeah, Bob Bobbles, those things. But um, I know that here, at least for the high school that I like five minutes from, uh, they didn't send anything to the students. But it's kind of like everyone's under the presumption that because I live in a general affluent neighborhood that we could afford it. So we didn't, weren't we weren't given handouts or like we'll use that term loosely like those items. Yeah. Um, but I know that for like I said in for your brothers because that's great. That's what schools if schools are able to do it they should do that because yeah. my God it's too expensive to buy like all the stiff stuff I have way too much money I probably shouldn't have done it but I did it but sh- sh- <laughs> but stuff but, like that that's, that, that's yeah. just yeah. But I mean, even even for that, because a lot of students, you know, either are bust in, like that's a that's a term that is used in the VOC community, bust being in. bust into school. So like, um, you know, you don't live, you live in a quote unquote poor neighborhood. And so you have to take the bus to a richer neighborhood in order yeah. to get a quote unquote quality education. And so, you know, if you are going to your, you know, more affluent school and they send you home, um, with nothing but you don't have anything at home well how are they supposed to know you know you just you go here you're just like all the other students but you don't know that no i i have issues or no i take three buses to get here you know those 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 little things um are really yeah. important and are you know sometimes overlooked very overlooked <laughs> That's oh man! Like this, this episode should be like things overlooked, <laughs> or like uh, Black History Month things overlooked. Yeah, basically, because what what have we uncovered? Uh, like poor vaccination rates for POC communities and people experience houselessness, uh, exposure to the cold um, because there's not housing is just too expensive, even for a place like Texas, which has surprisingly low rates, but again like you still need a job a stable job to afford those things but that didn't happen there was a freak snowstorm uh talked about just having access to therapy or access to physicians and doctors that could understand who we are and our experiences without being biased or dismissive about our feelings or our pain and uh money just money like the money to just even try to keep up a life in c19 in covid right now because it's, a, it's, a, it's an honest nightmare yeah. and then the the obvious divide that we all know is becoming more and more ingrained as it gets more exposed out into the news and all these hashtags and all these video clips of these racist acts or covert racist acts or macro aggressive macro aggressive or micro aggressive acts micro yeah yeah so yeah. there's yeah it's yeah, i don't want to end this on a sad note either too as as for an episode but that's just food for thought for those who are listening all of our viewers fd listeners or anyone who pops in to just take a quick listen is that uh don't be blind oh i shouldn't say that that's that's really bad that's ableism uh don't like don't uh keep your eyes open like literally make sure you look around you and just be aware of some of those things that have been said in daily conversations if you catch it and you don't like it that is something that if it bothers you that's something that you need to need to talk about um or if you're on your new if you use social media and you see friends reposting things that are important to them actually look at them and read about them uh because that's something that you might be interested in or you know not just like hobbies or pictures of foods of dogs or cats and all that but if something's like hey this is something serious that's happening in our community right now you should look at it do look at it uh because uh you might learn something that you might have never learned before and that's how i learned half these things that we talked about the podcast because i took a look and i didn't want to be ignorant to these issues still trying to be like we're still on a big big learning curve that's why we do these episodes every two weeks so we can learn something new people of that aren't in the black community should be doing the work to see like what racism is because it's not black people's job to educate us Mm -hmm. as non-black folks it Mm -hmm. is our job to be aware and to educate ourselves um because it's not that hard like the internet is a beautiful huge resource and there's so many places to start and it is like a really big um uphill journey to tackle everything but if you chip at it a little bit at a time it's not it becomes a lot less overwhelming and when you start to really look at it a lot of the things are kind of like 
you see the same things over again. You start to see like patterns. Patterns, yeah, there we go. And terms that are, are that you are like, okay, I've seen this before and you can start to apply it and it becomes like easier to understand how big and how large systematic racism is. Um, and if you're not even like a reader, there's a ton of documentaries now that are like visual and audio that are yeah, like- perfect. <laughs> yeah, that are, are definitely, they break it down in a way that's really easy to understand and it's in a, a shorter time frame for people who, you know, who don't like to read or whatever. There are tons of resources and there's really no excuse at this point for you to be like, oh, well, you didn't teach me about this. Well, it's not your job, okay? It's not that hard to look it up, okay? If you didn't learn in school and you have internet, internet is power, learn it now. Like, yeah, for sure. Doesn't, it doesn't take that much. Like, even one fact a day is more than probably what you could have learned in school if you glossed over your textbook, like, nothing especially when it comes to our social history. Um, yeah, there's I was some of those. definitely mm -hmm. trying to find, and I couldn't find it, sadly. There was definitely um, this tweet th that I saw that was really, really great. And um, it talks about how being poor is a part of systematic racism. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. I, I might have saw that one, too. And so, like, if anyone who listens to this is, like, is able to hire people, think about how much that helps someone like by you hiring them and giving them a job because if you don't have the money that becomes an issue like i can't afford to go and get my teeth fixed because i don't have enough money so guess what happens next year next year i have rots. A, there you go rots, then you lose more money you lose your teeth your health declines and then well boom you're yeah. one foot in the grave but then yeah. also the loans the amount that you have to pay back 10 years mm -hmm, down the mm -hmm, line mm -hmm. yeah it's a yeah and like that doesn't just have to be teeth you know it can Anything. be it can be vision it can be back you know it can be knee pain you know you know it can be so much you know or like it could have been gout it can be you know diabetes it's there's so much but if i can't afford to go to the doctor or if i can't afford to go to the dentist then you can't afford the dentist you can't figure out what's with the tooth issue that's giving you if i can't afford the doctor and i have diabetes but i didn't know about it now i have to amputate my foot you know like if i can't afford you know glasses well guess what now that's a problem for me seeing and that can cause an accident for me or for someone else so those just those things of having benefits that mm -hmm. come with jobs you know or just the money that can help you to afford these benefits yeah. There was a, there was a quote. I don't know if it's a quote or it's like a proverb, but I've read this before, and I think I think we might have heard different variations of this. It's a it's about a man buying boots, boots that are worth ten bucks and boots that are worth a hundred. If you if the man buys the boots for a hundred bucks, it is something that he could use for at least ten years. But if you buy boots that are ten bucks, it will be worn out within a month, and then he spends another ten bucks to use the same cheap boots, but they don't last as long. And then they would pay double or triple the amount if they would have just invested in the hundred dollar boot but guess what you're shelled out for money you're gonna be using money to pay for cheaper quality stuff like cheaper quality treatment um and sometimes that doesn't cut it like you said for those people who are suffering from underlying conditions diabetes gout arthritis uh cancer or any of those things and all you get like oh you only get this part of the treatment when you could have this whole thing that could help you well i'm out of i'm out of ten thousand dollars i don't have that in my back pocket but that's it that that that's a thing that the boot story so um i think that's another way also that we could explain to our viewers um that poverty in a way is also part of systematic racism if you don't give if you don't give chances or you don't put money back into these communities these communities are going to continue to suffer years on end, and then it will always be an issue. Bob's like, what can we do more to help these community members? Blah, blah. It's like, we told you how, but we need you to actually do it and stop voting no on some of these policies that could literally help bring everybody back up. But obviously that takes time. But sometimes these people don't have time. And they're on short time because of their health conditions or housing, like ho their housing status or whatever they could get food on the table so ah! poverty <laughs> it uh be like that and someone's it don't it really don't it really don't i'm using these like colloquial terms about sorry <laughs> i've been watching too many tiktoks so sorry about that uh, but just food for thought think about that proverb think about what elise has said think about what jazz has said as well that you see patterns you see 
you, you you see things. Our brain works in fabulous ways. Patterns is the easiest way to go about it. If you see something that's happening in location A, that's also happening in location B, and it's crappy, and there's something that could be done about it, there you go. There, That's something to think about and to ask questions. Ask questions about these things. And then just be aware of people who have less than you. Be aware of... <laughs> be aware of... Yes, go on. Sorry, you cut out for a moment. You went Wally. Mm-mm. Okay. Oh, yeah. So it, for the amount of suffering that everyone is going through to whatever degree, it's not a competition. Uh, we're gonna we're going through a rough time together and the best thing way that we can get out of this together the best way that we can get out of this together oh that's my voice in the back <laughs> no worries uh, the best way we can get out of this together is to be compassionate and understanding if you're able to offer a helping hand please do that if that means donating or if that means uh like uh, giving supplies or anything like that like that is something to think true. about i can hear myself twice <laughs> no it's okay it's okay it's okay don't, don't worry about it i just thought that's funny um but yeah, that's food for thought uh, for this episode, but it is getting a little long, and we're going to wrap this up. But for next episode, uh, Elise will be joining me again, and we're going to be talking to a very special guest, uh, Shane. And I'm looking forward to our conversation tomorrow. It's actually tomorrow <laughs> at 12 o'clock, yes. so I don't want to keep them here for too long. But any last words, Jazz and Elise, before we sign up? I want to end this on a positive note, like how we can move forward. Um, you know, how can we face, I want to talk specifically about race, uh, okay. racism in medicine, um, and how we can move forward from this. Sure. Um, as I don't want to, I really, I'm not here to speak for the black community at all. Um, but what I've learned from um, our black history trainings, at, or like seminars at our work, um, as, you know, people who, if you have mistrust with people in medicine, ask them questions, ask them lots and lots of questions, always advocate for yourself and always know that this person, it may seem like they are your own opposite. Sometimes they are, and that's the unfortunate part, but as much as you can just know that if you do not feel comfortable with whoever your provider is, you do not have to stay with that provider um, because your health is in your own hands. Mm -hmm. And I hope that you, um, you know, take your health, you know, is serious and your intuition, I think is something that you should a lot of the time listen to. Um, and I think for people who are, on the other hand, who are providing care, um, the biggest thing is always just listen to communities that are often overlooked. I think that's like just the biggest thing is believe yeah. them, like period. There's no conditionals, just believe them. Um, and the second is um, advocate for them in spaces where um, they aren't very present. Like there aren't very large, um, like, you know, in spaces where like you have the directors or whatever, or with your fellow doctors, I know my mentor who is a black physician, he will call out when his coworkers are being racist and he'll do it without, you know, thinking twice about it. Yeah, do it. Yeah. And we should be, I I think if you are, you know, really an ally and you're really here for the black community, then that's what you should be doing. It's not, you're not here to play nice. You know what I mean? If yeah. someone's being racist and they are in a space where they can, you know, potentially hurt people because they are being racist, then call them out on that. Um, and there is there is so much more um, positivity that we can we, we can move forward. Like there is this isn't like an empty solutionless issue. Um, just remember that there is hope, but we are gonna have to work to get there. And that's kind of my big spiel. Hey, no, that's perfect. Especially like since some of us has aspirations to be in this space where there isn't a lot of representation for um, the Black community, for Latinx, for Asians. It's advocate for them when they're not there and that's if that's the best that if that's the best that we could do in that current space and time then we're gonna have to do it someone's gonna someone's gonna have to do it and it can't just be on the backs of the black community who've been doing it for themselves for years and we got to do it for them too oh yeah oh and that's like another thing too like <laughs> if you if someone else if you know that they don't feel comfortable getting care from you i feel like give them the resources so that they can go yes. find someone that they do feel comfortable with like don't take it personally it, it is just what it is you know what i mean mm -hmm. um, yeah just as long as you can find them the best resources for care like that's i think the most important part and that's the easiest way to do it <laughs> Lise, your soapbox yeah yeah um i guess my soapbox is um google it that's my soapbox <laughs> uh you know um, you want to find racism google it google it um, there it is that's the title <laughs> Google it. Um, cause you know, there's, there's so many times where, um, 
I'll encounter um, a situation. And I understand some people don't know how to ask. Um, and, you know, I think the best way if you're going to ask someone something um, and you and you feel like, oh, I'd rather not Google it and I and I could, so I'm just going to make this person feel uncomfortable, is maybe just phrases, hey, I'm not sure about this topic. Do you mind if I ask you? If you phrase it like that, it sounds so much better. I don't feel like, you know, you're coming to attack me or you're trying to come in my personal space and want me to educate you. It's like, hey, I just want to ask this quick question. Do you mind if we have a conversation? That just helps so much. And that just breaks down so much, you know, just as simple as like, hey, I see you have braids. If you don't mind me asking, you know, how do you get your braids done? If I don't feel comfortable, like, you know, I don't feel comfortable. Can you just look it up on YouTube? That's fine. But, you know, I can also just explain it to them. But just the way you frame questions is really important. The way you say things is really important. And it's why you'll see a lot of people recording these instances that they're having, you know, um, people of color are having because it's like, you don't believe me when I tell you that I'm having these conversations with people. So let me show you well, I'm yeah. having these conversations with people, you know? And so, yeah, Google it, YouTube it. It's there. <laughs> There's millions of results. There's millions of people who love to sit in front of a screen and talk about it. And, you know, it also helped you find a way to educate yourself about someone else's culture. So, you know what? I think it's really great. And uh, Google it. Read something besides Reddit or Twitter. That's You're calling me out. <laughs> hey, it's me too. Okay, okay. okay. I'm just saying, okay. I, like I said, I found half the things that we talked about today on Twitter through proper sources with a check mark next to it. And then like to, to bounce off what Lisa, like I know that you and I, when we have our separate phone calls to have you come on the episode of Friday, like I know that I had, I asked you some of those things and I did my, I tried, I hopefully it was well received. Like you did. did my best to like yeah. phrase it in a way that doesn't sound offensive or it would hurt you or make you uncomfortable. But it's just like, how else am I going to ask it properly without offense? And you could do that. You, you could literally train your brain mm -hmm. to rework some of the things that you would say to another person. Yeah, because you didn't come at me saying you need to tell me this. It's like because if you would have, I would have been totally defensive, <laughs> yeah. and I wouldn't want to do that. But you no, did, yeah. and that's that's just part of being a human being and having compassion. You know, yeah, compassion the the key one of the key components of fulfilling destiny. Compassion, compassion, and commitment. Yeah. Commitment to learn something new. Care about other people. What's the last one? What's the last one? Um, that's a good question. I don't have the answer to it. Hold on, think? hold on before I like totally like nuke myself online. Yikes. Hold on, hold on. Commitment. Community. Community. There it is. Community. <laughs> okay, let's let's rewind back. Okay. Compassion. We need to care about our all of our community members, especially the ones who are overlooked or underrepresented. So there's that. Care for those community members in the best way that you can, whether it's in the spaces that they're not in currently or in solidarity with them side by side, wh wherever that may be, right? The grocery store, obviously six feet apart, you know, um, or any of those any of those times. Um, community, we're gonna do better to do, at least we're fulfilling Desi, we're doing our best to outreach farther, right? We're making, uh, this is just for fulfilling Destiny side, we're trying to outreach farther um, past the 94, we're expanding outwards to different cities, but even then, at, if we're not talking about fulfilling destiny, what we could do as humans, uh, as humans, as we need to reach out to community members, we need to stay connected so we could solve and work over time some of these issues that we deal with, racism, equity, um, all those things. And then commitment. These are commitments. The, the time to unlearn some of our misconceptions, the myths, the lies that we were told growing up about another person, another race, that takes time. It takes time to learn takes time to un like undo some of those things are deeply ingrained. Like we don't need to save face anymore. We could get help if you have access to it. And if you don't have access to it, it's gonna take commitment to get to those things. And it might be a hop and a skip over. You might be going through the trenches, but we're, it's gonna take time. It's gonna take time. So if like Lee said, if you have the time as passively as possible, you can look up YouTube for some of these videos or documentaries on Netflix or Hulu or whatever TV provider source that you use for those things but there you go tying uh tying those four components hey that was so smooth i need a i need a, i need snaps for that Woo! <laughs> but uh before this episode gets too long um 
yeah, so thank you everyone for listening to this part one of uh, Black History Month special uh, with my fine, lovely guest Jazz and Elise. They're fabulous. I love them. <laughs> and thank you so much for your time, everyone. Uh, I love having you both here. We really do get some some deep intellectual talks. If I run my mouth too long, I'm so sorry. I, mean, I think I'm beca- I think I'm getting a little bit of Doctor Doctor Records uh, soapbox things. I think it's because I'm I'm an educator now, so I'm just like, ha, huh. <laughs> talking too much. I'm so gonna much fill talk. this. I'm gonna fill this silence. <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> but there's there's that. So uh, look forward to our next episode. I will say good night to these lovely individuals. So since it's gonna go on video, everyone could wave. Bye. Good night, everyone. And we'll see everyone soon for the next episode. So here we go. Ending in three, two, one.